Hello friends and welcome to Pi Shine. This is part 10 of the Pi QT5 learning series. Today, we will design a graphical user interface in Python to plot the live audio data. We will learn how to put a matplotlib figure to Pi QT5 GUI. Also, we will talk about the basics behind digital audio. A sound converted to digital form represents the digital audio. First, the sound is sampled at equal intervals using an analog to digital converter. For example, Let's assume we have taken five samples of the audio waveform as shown. These samples are decimal numbers and in 5 bits binary, each of them can be represented as shown. This binary data is then sent to, let's say a 5-bit digital to analog converter to regenerate the waveform at speakers. This waveform should be sampled at a sufficiently high frequency to approximately represent the sound. Today, we will use these decimal numbers to plot the live audio from the microphone of computer in PiQt5 GUI. The audible sound has a frequency range from 20 to 20,000 Hz, and the fundamental frequencies of the typical adults are only a few hundred Hz. According to the Nyquist criteria, the sampling frequency should be at least twice the fundamental frequency to properly sample the audio waveform. It means that a sampling frequency or sample rate of 40 kHz is enough to capture the audible frequency of 20 kHz. However, in general, it is sampled at 44.1 kHz. This sampling rate originated in the late 1970s with PCM adapters to record the digital audio on video cassettes, such as the Sony PCM 1600. The rate was chosen by Sony and has become a de facto standard because this suits well for PAL and NTSC video standards. To plot the audio data, we should consider a set of parameters. So let's start making the GUI which will input these parameters to plot. Let's create a new main window. To hold the set of parameters, we require a group box. So we drag and drop it on the main window from the container widgets. All right, let's change its name to parameters. At the top, we can give a title using the label taken from the display widget. Now, we can change the font size from the property editor, as shown. Also, we align its center to the horizontal. Let's put the combo box that will have a list of audio devices. Also, we add a label beside it. The length of audio data is given by the parameter window length. It will take value from the line edit, which is an input widget. Similarly, the sampling rate parameter can be added.
to skip some samples, we can select the value of down samples. If it is 10, that will mean to drop 10 previous samples in the sequence of data. To show the plots in real time, it should be updated at a specific interval. This is called update interval, and it is in milliseconds. The last one, in this group box is a push button, that will let us, to start the plot. Alright, let's give them the grid layouts, to keep things nice and tidy. We will now put a widget, to hold the place, where the matplotlib figure, will finally show up. Let's give it a black background. To keep the GUI intact, let's add the horizontal and vertical spaces. Let's rename the push button, and add the initial values, to the parameters. Also, we can write units to some of the labels. We can remove, the additional spacing, added, by these spaces, by setting their width or height to zero, as shown. Now, we can save this as main.ui. Let's have a look at it. Same as our previous tutorials, here, we'll convert it to main.py file, but this time, we will only use it, as a reference to the location of the widget, where we can put the plot figure. Also, we can easily find out, the line edit number for the corresponding parameter. Alright, we will make the GUI.py file to load the main.ui file. This is a better approach to design GUIs in PyQt5, because, in this way you can edit, the UI file, without changing the GUI.py file. Let's import the essentials. The sound device module will be used to obtain the audio data from the microphone. 
UIC will be used to load the main.UI. The input audio device infos will be used to get the list of audio devices in computer. Here, we make the class for the matplotlib canvas figure. Now, we will make the class to represent the main GUI window. Here, we assign the user interface from the main.UI file. Resize the main window. After adding the icon, we call the thread pool from the queue thread pool. Make a devices list and use it in the combo box. Whenever the selection in combo box changes, we will call the self.update now. From the main.py file, we observed that the position of widget is 2111 in the grid layout form. So here, we will add the figure canvas instead of that widget. We initialize the reference plot to none. For the start, the queue will be used. To buffer the audio data, the size of Q is 20. The audio device index is 0. The parameters are initialized here. Here we give the default sample rate to the sound device. We will use QT timer to keep on updating the plot at the desired interval. From main.py file, we know each line edit and its relevant parameter name. For each of them, we will call the respective function. A worker queue thread will be started when the push button is pressed. The get audio function will start the audio stream. Put the audio data into the queue. Now, the start worker function will start the thread as a worker. This worker class will be discussed shortly. It will call the start stream function to disable all input parameters and start the audio stream by calling the get audio function.
let's define functions for the parameters. Here, in the update plot, we will get the data from the queue. Using the NumPy, we will roll it and plot it. The QRunAble class is well suited to situations where we want to perform some background processing in one or more secondary threads without needing the full power and flexibility provided by QThread. At Pyte slot is a decorator which converts simple Python method to Qt slot. This has the advantage of reducing the amount of memory used and is slightly faster. You can easily visualize the performance difference by calling the normal thread instead of queue thread. First, we will let the GUI run as it is. Next, let's change the window length to 5000. It will increase the number of samples to be displayed. Increasing the update interval to 1000 milliseconds will be like refreshing data every one second. You can play around with the sampling rate as well. That's all for today. If you have questions, suggestions, please comment, share if you like, and subscribe to PyShine. Have a nice day and see you again.